Imagine with me for a second that you have a Facebook account or an Instagram account or Twitter account or whatever account you want, and you're locked out of it. Whatever are you to do? Well, I know quite a few people that are offering to help online, and I have always been curious what that actually looks like. I get these messages all the time. Here's a look really quick at my Twitter account. Actually, let's start with let's start with YouTube. On YouTube, if I come into my comments held for review all the time for all types of hacks and recovery, contact Kenex Hack on Instagram. Hey, I will give you a course for 25 bucks. You got all kinds of scams. Contact Iron Tony 666 at Gmail. And we have all these extreme hacking. I just need back into my email account. Okay. That's the general premise. Now, on Twitter, I like to put out what are called thirst traps for bots, okay? And these these thirst traps, all you have to do is say, hey, I've been hacked, can't get back into my account, and bots will immediately appear. Now, we live streamed this yesterday. Unfortunately, the guy that I was talking to has already been suspended. It usually goes pretty quick, but we could see a few more replies in here. This guy said, hey, uh, I can see that uh, or my account got hacked yesterday, but I got it back from this tech shine zero. And this other guy said, sorry, you've been hacked. I saw your tweet. Go ahead and message shadow hacks. OK, so these bots come out and they say, hey, I can help you out here. Just just let me help you. Go ahead and message this person on Instagram. So I went ahead and took the liberty of messaging a few people on Instagram. Now, here is the general premise. I messaged five different people and three of them responded back to me very quick. These two down here were from my YouTube and they did not respond at all so far. So the ones that were on uh, were on Twitter and botting me immediately actually responded pretty quick. So that was interesting to see. They all have the same cadence. We're going to focus on HackWiz here and some of the, the information that I found out about HackWiz. But you can see they all have the same look to them. They all have the same feel to the account. I tell them all I'm in need of help. I've been locked out of my Facebook account. And he's got good customer service, by the way. I applaud his customer service throughout this whole thing because it is fantastic. Uh, he's He asks how long you've been locked out of your account for. Same thing happened in these other ones. It's almost like they're going off of a script. Now, I had some thoughts going into this that these were likely people from low cost of living countries. Um, these are likely people that are working maybe in cubicles or working in like a scam farm of sorts. And you've probably seen these on YouTube and they likely have managers and it likely runs pretty deep. OK, um, we pretty much targeted a location. I am fairly certain as this goes on that they are in Africa. I am fairly certain that they are in Kenya. Um, some details that we pulled, I'll show you. But. With that being said, they could have had really good OPSEC and just been fooling us the entire time, though I don't think that was the case here. Now, these people are not hackers, I should point out. I asked a couple of them, hey, what do you what do you use to hack? And they said, I'll tell you later or I'll tell you after you pay me. So the general premise is I can get back into your account. I said, I'm locked out of my account, been locked out for a week now, can't seem to remember the password. What's your username? I gave him this fake user that we created. And he said, was your account hacked or can you not get back in? I said, I just can't get back in. He says, OK, well, your account can be gotten within a few minutes. Amazing hackers, a few minutes. OK, I, I'm impressed. I would hire this guy if he could hack a Facebook account in, in a few minutes. And I said, hey, I heard about you on Twitter. This is, again, customer service. How did you hear about us? And uh, so I said, I posted my account. Somebody offered up. And he said, I can get you in 15 minutes max. Okay, I said, how much and what payment methods? Now, this guy asked for $53, said he accept Bitcoin and PayPal. This quick recovery guy told me that he only accepts, no, he accepts both PayPal and uh, uh, Bitcoin as well. This guy was only cryptocurrency, nothing else. I asked about Google Play cards and he said he would take Google Play if I paid 100. Now, Shadow Hacks over here was $50, HackWiz was $53, and Quick Recovery was $80. So there was not pricing across the board. Um, they would ask me where I'm from and they would give me a an email address. So with this email address, went and did some basic OSINT information. I wanted to see if this email address had ever been 
um, in a breach before, which this one has. If you searched it on Have I Been Pwned, it has been in a breach. If you look up the name Regina Karumba, it comes back to African names. Um, and this could, again, be OPSEC on their part, but I don't think that it is. Uh, so this is not, I don't think, anything of their name. I just think that it's what they're using is, is African names here. And I uh, searched this, didn't see anything, didn't see anything for the username. But a trick that you can do is you can copy this, okay? And you can come into Gmail and paste it and say next. And then you could say, hey, I forgot my password. Okay, when it asks you if you forgot your password, you could say, hey, I try another way. It will say, confirm the phone number on your account settings. Confirm the phone number. This phone number has one, two, three, four digits up front, one, two, three, four, five, six digits on the back. If this was a US phone number, it would go three, three, four, like you would imagine the US. You can imagine other countries. So this is kind of giving an indicator of the country layout four digits, then six digits, ending in zero, one. We could choose the country here. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and pick the country, but I'm fairly certain this gives a nice indication. Okay, so it ends in 01, and I try to OSINT him a little bit. He tells me to use the payment as family and friends, which is just so that they get money without having to pay any fees. And I told him, hey, it's asking me for a number ending in 01. And he's like, can you send a screenshot? So while we're on stream really, really fast, we make up this fake... Uh, fake OSINT type deal on PayPal showing that we're trying to send him money. And at the very bottom, it says, please verify recipient's phone number. Here's a couple blocks, first block, second block, submit payment. And he said, okay, can you try submitting without that? We said, sure, but we sent him an error page. So basically all I'm trying to do is get a number out of him because I wanted to talk to him on the phone. Um, then he goes ahead and he sends me another email. We repeat this process. We keep going through. Um, and I keep asking him little questions, to try to get up. And I said, you're out of Africa. Yes. Um, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for him to respond at times. So I, I got bored and asked him who his favorite hackers were, which led uh, to another side quest that I could tell you about. He asked me to go on Coinbase. I, I kept deferring. I wanted to get him to either give me a phone number with PayPal, because if I went Google Play or if I went Coinbase or anything else, then I lose the leverage that I think or thought I had at least. Um, so I was trying to get him to disclose information going to any other platform. I feel like I did not have that same leverage. So with this, I asked him, please just send me your top three favorite hackers while you're waiting. He sends me a list that if you Google like top hackers, these are the guys that show up. And what's funny is uh, I posted this on Twitter, but we tricked his bot or he posted it in the bot. Um, so his account got deleted, but I, I went ahead and saved it. I asked him this and then his, his bot went out on Twitter and posted the same thing. Uh, so I don't know what happened here, but just uh, just a side quest that was kind of funny. Um, and I told him later on that he posted it and he went and deleted it. And this is all last night before uh, before he got taken down. This account, by the way, was from April of 2021, had no posts until last night, started posting. And pretty much as soon as they get they start posting, then they get shut down. My guess is if I'd go search for HackWiz, we'd see a bunch of different bots online every day getting picked up and then just getting deleted the next day. OK, so I'm telling him we can't do we can't do Coinbase. It says one to two days for ACH deposit. So can we do PayPal? This really just goes back and forth. OK, he keeps giving me information and different names and email addresses, and I keep searching them, finding phone numbers, going back and forth. He eventually gives me a fourth email address, which goes to AOL, which AOL actually gives me even more information. So this starts with zero one ends in nine six. They've got a bunch of different phone numbers attached to these accounts. I'm sure they're all fake phone numbers. I really just want to get a phone number out of him and see if I can talk to him. Uh, eventually, I said ending in 96 is the number. He finally just gives me the phone number. OK, so we call him up on stream and we try talking to them. This number of 479 is out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, somebody answers the phone. It sounds like they are talking from a phone through another phone, maybe through a tin can. It sounded like a, a, a trucker radio and very, very distant. Uh, we can make out an African accent. We were talking to him, um, basically asked him about what was going on here. And he didn't give us any information. And in fact, he was not this same guy. Um, I, he's told me that, you know, I'll help you out on Facebook, but I can't help you out on Instagram. I stepped away from my computer. I think 
somebody else involved in the scam somebody elsewhere i'm not sure how it tied in we didn't get that far into it this was just literally an hour or two of of messing around with this guy just wasting his time and trying to find out a little bit of information about how this operation works so he says you got cash app blah 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 he believes me that he's asking for a number so he never encountered it before um, I said, I, I talked to another African. It wasn't you. He was kind of rude. And the guy was kind of rude. Um, this guy's really nice. And he said, you weren't supposed to do that. And I told him, hey, like he he told me to text him, which he did. And he'd help me um, and that he'd be cheaper than you. That part I made up. But uh, he said, don't fall for a cheap trick. He only provides accounts where payments are already made. So uh, we're just going back and forth at this point. I don't ever get a phone number out of him. Um, I, you know, I asked some questions, try to get a little bit more details, uh, good job on him for never actually giving me one of those phone numbers for the accounts. Uh, good job on not actually getting on the phone. I eventually asked him, Hey, can we, can we talk on the phone? He said, I prefer texting. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think that there's anything in there that is going to lead to me necessarily doxing him unless I really try. And I really wasn't trying to dox him on stream. Um, we ended yesterday with saying, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go and talk to somebody else. And he told me, have a good day. And then today he's back again. I don't know if I want to keep this up. Um, this other guy that I was talking to tried calling me last night on video chat, which I was already asleep and I missed, which sucks. Uh, cause I would have loved to video chat with this person and get more information out of them. Um, maybe we take this further do a part two, but it was really, really interesting. Here with him, he's back. Um, they're working early in the morning and we were talking late at night. I don't know what the time difference is where they're at, but we were we were working for hours. He was working me just to get 50 bucks. Now, the the other thing of this before we, we drop off here is that I went and watched some other videos of people talking to hackers online. One guy went out there and he paid $600 in Bitcoin just to see what would happen. And the next step is basically they tell you, hey, we, we hacked into your account, but this account has multi-factor authentication enabled, and now we need more money in order to get into this account. So basically, they're going to keep telling you, hey, you paid me, but I need more, and I need more. And basically, they're going to eventually fall at the pace of the earth. You'll never hear from them again. All they want is your money. They have no idea how to hack anything. They're not hackers. If you're watching this and you are even remotely interested in this or remotely interested in seeking services like this, uh, please know that these are just all scammers. There's nobody out there that's going to hack into your Instagram or your Facebook without some social engineering, without a weak password, um, probably a combination of both, if I'm being honest. So with that being said, that is it for this video. My curiosity got the best of me and I went down this little rabbit hole. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing what's on the other side of these hacker scams. My name is a Cyber Mentor. If you like this video, please do hit the like button, subscribe button, and thank you so much for 200,000 subscribers. You guys are awesome. We are just growing like crazy. Uh, I cannot believe it. So thank you so much for 200,000. Here's to another 200,000 more. I will see you in the next video. Comment down below if you want to see a video, what kind of videos you want to see. I'll do my best to try and make those videos. Peace out.